Mr. President, it is my privilege at the outset of my remarks to express to you the deep pleasure and satisfaction evoked in my country by your election to the highest office in the gift of the United Nations. Your integrity of purpose, your clarity of thought and expression, your judicial temperament are an example here to us all, and we feel fortunate indeed in the choice of our presiding officer. I wish also to convey to the Secretary General the sincere congratulations of my government on his unanimous re-election to the onerous and distinguished office which he occupies. In the course of the debate, the distinguished Prime Minister of Canada expressed the wish that this, the 12th Assembly, might be known as the Assembly of Disarmament. Many other speakers have echoed this wish and this hope. But, Mr. President, is it not tragic that the 12th Assembly should still be talking of hopes for disarmament? Twelve years after a war that was characterized by horrors which no human mind could comprehend or envisage. Is it not tragic that 40 years after the First World War, which was fought under the slogan of the war to end all wars, we of this generation, many of whom witnessed the ravages of both, are still engaged in debating the need and desirability of disarmament. All employ almost the identical terminology. All speak of peace. But this is accompanied by such lack of confidence, by such lack of friendship, that one often stops and wonders whether words have retained their original connotation. Whether the same word, spoken by different representatives, really has the same meaning. We, all of the new sovereign states, should be permitted and encouraged to concentrate all our energy, all of our resources in manpower and economic resources in fighting poverty, illiteracy, disease, and desolation. But, Mr. President, are these the realities of the world in which we live? No. The sad and cruel fact is that these new countries are born into a world bitterly divided and preoccupied by a headlong race to increase destructive power and distressed by a global tension which moves from one region to another without losing its acuteness or peril. The burden under which we, the young and small nations, begin our new life is that of armaments. And before we can cope with the problems of development, we are driven by necessity to prepare to defend what was just gained, our freedom and our very being. Israel fully agrees that problems of disarmament, both global and regional, should have a primary place in the work of this session. It is vital that we should break the cycle of failure which has for so long characterized this central problem. While it is true that effective progress is dependent upon the action and agreement of a very few of our membership, it is the duty of all of us not to remain merely passive onlookers. We must express our opinion that it is inconceivable that these talks be discontinued. They must go on until an understanding is reached. If all those who call for peace mean it, then an agreement will be reached, has to be reached. 